Hi, and welcome to the next in this series of screencasts on programming for psychology and vision science. So in this screencast, we're going to look more at how we can control the flow of our programs. This time, how we can execute statements multiple times. We're going to do this using the for and while statements in Python. So the objectives of today's lesson. So we want to know how to use these for and while loops to allow us to repeatedly execute some code. Okay, so as usual, we'll, we'll start up Spider. So we're going to start by uh, thinking about an example of where we're uh, running an experiment that consists of multiple trials. So in this example, all a trial is going to involve is printing the trial number to the screen. So we're going to start by thinking about us having uh, five trials. So the first thing we'll do is start a new script and save it. And okay. So we're running this experiment. We have five trials. Each trial, we just want to print the trial number to the screen. So one way we might do this is to just print one, print two, print three, print four, and print five. Okay, if we save that and run it, as expected, we have our functionality there. So we printed out the numbers one through five to the screen. So obviously this sort of procedure is going to get very tedious and very error prone. Particularly if the code for each trial is actually quite complex or if we have lots and lots of trials. So for any kind of real experiment that you're going to be running, both of these is like, are likely to be true. So the code for presenting a, a visual stimulus, for example, is likely to be quite complex and the number of trials could easily go into the hundreds to a thousand or so. So what we want to want to have is some way that we can automate these, these repetitive tasks. So firstly, we're going to look at a way we can do this using what's called a for loop. So what this does is takes a, a collection of data and iterates or loops over the items one at a time. So the first thing we need is um, a collection. So in this uh, example, what we need is something that represents the trials that we want to loop over. So what we can do is define a list. So we'll call it uh, trials equals, if you remember this function range, which we can use to generate a list. So we're going to start from one and we want one through five. So we'll have our stop as six. Okay, so now to implement the, the same functionality as what we just had in our um, repeated print statements, we're going to use a for loop. So we start out by typing for, now we're going to type trial in trials, and then a colon, and then we're indented, and we're going to print trial. Okay, let's save it and run it, and then we'll work through what's going on. All right, so you can see in the output that again, we have our numbers one through five printed to the output, just what we wanted. All right, so how do we, how do, we do that? So we started out by using this special Python command uh, for. So we specify for, and then we have what we've said here is trial. Now this is a variable. We can call this whatever we want. Here we've called it uh, trial. Then we have another special Python command in and then we have our collection. So here it's our list, our list of trials. And then the colon character. So you can read this as for every item in trials, call it trial and then execute everything um, that is indented below this for loop uh, repeatedly until there's nothing left in trials. So it helps to, to think about the operation of these loops by, by breaking them down. So let's think about the first time through. So trials is one, two, three, four, five. So the first time through, the variable trial will get the value of the number one. 
So this print will print one, and it'll come back up. And now trial will take on the second value in trials, which is two. So we'll print two, so on for three and four and five. There's nothing left in trials, so we'll exit and that finishes the program. Okay, so that's a form of iteration that's known as a, a for loop. The other form that we're going to look at is called a while loop. So you'll notice that for this for loop, we specified exactly how many iterations we wanted. So this is, de this is determined by the number of items in the list. In this case, the number of items in trials. But sometimes we don't know how long we want to loop for. We just know that we want to repeat the execution of some code until a particular desired state is reached. So for example, Say if you're, you're presenting a dynamic pattern as a stimulus and your participant needs to press a button to make a judgment on a particular trial. So you don't know precisely when they're going to press the button. This depends on the individual participant. So rather than using a for loop, we could use this version of a loop called a while loop. All right, so we start by um, defining a Boolean variable called responded and we'll set it to false. So we're going to use this to track whether our participant has, has responded or not. So now we're going to start our while loop. We use this by using the command while. Now the um, subsequent statement is going to be a test, a boolean that will evaluate to true or false. So what we want to do is while not responded and then colon and then now nested inside this while loop, we're going to, just for illustration purposes, print something to the output. So we'll print looping. So every time the program goes through this um, iterative sequence, it'll print a separate uh, looping statement to the output. Okay, so we're not actually um, running an experiment with a particip participant here. So we want to uh, simulate when they're going to press the button. So we're going to do this by simulating the, the random timing of their response by using a random number draw. So we're going to, on each iteration through the loop, we're going to draw a random number between 0 and 1. And if it's greater than 0 0.9, we're going to use that as a proxy for um, the participant having pressed the button to make their judgment. So if you remember, the first thing we want to do to use this functionality is to import the random package. Then what we'll do is use an if statement. So if our random draw, this has been between 0 and 1, if it's greater than 0 0.9, we're going to use this as an indication that the participant has responded. So we'll set responded to be true. OK, so let's work through what's going on here. So firstly, we've imported this um, random package. Then we've created a variable called responded that we're setting to false. Now we've kicked off this while loop. So this is while not responded. So initially, responded is false. So not responded is true. So everything under this while loop will repeatedly execute as long as not responded is true. Okay, so you think the first time through, it's going to print looping. It's going to generate this random number. If it's greater than 0.9, then respondent's going to be true. If it isn't, respondent's going to stay at false. Then it comes back up, and it's going to do this test again. So is not responded true or false? If it's true, then we go and do the loop again. If it's false, we skip out and the program finishes. All right, so let's save and run the program and see what happens. Okay, so you can see there it's, it's looped, looped through once. So this is a, a random property. So we must have just got lucky that on this draw, on the very first draw, we generated something greater than 0.9. Let's try it again. So just to show you that there, there is multiple um, iterations at least possible. Okay, so now this time it did it twice. Try it again, 
twice again. Okay, so now it looped a few more times. So you can see that by using this while loop, you can keep executing a series of statements um, until you've, you've reached a particular uh, state which is determined by this, this test here. So something that might have become apparent to you is that you re really need to think carefully about this particular um, case here. Because, so you can easily find yourself in a situation where this can never be false. This leads to what's called an infinite loop. Basically the, the program will keep running forever because it can never escape out of this loop. In this case we have to have to cancel the program. So let's just see what that looks like. So one way we can find ourselves in, a, um, in an infinite loop is if our uh, test to see if participants were responded is something like this. So now we know that the random dot random is never going to return anything greater than one. So we're never going to be greater than 1.9. So this responded will never be true. So not responded will never be false. So we'll never skip out of this. So if we save and run, we'll see that, so our program is still running. It's just busily printing out, uh, looping to the output. So it'll do this forever. There's, there's nothing that's going to stop the program. So we have to do it, do it manually. So we'll click this red, red stop button here. So it might take a while to sort of realize because it's so busy uh, looping away that it hasn't uh, been able to notice that we've clicked this uh, stop button to make this loop um, or make the program actually force it to stop. Okay, so returning to our objectives. So what we've covered in this uh, screencast is how we can use for and while loops to allow us to repeatedly execute our program code.